As soon as I started working as a penetration tester, I realized something pretty quickly. A lot of technical knowledge is expected of mid-level engineers and more so from senior engineers. I've been working as a penetration tester for over a year now. My journey started as an associate security engineer and I got promoted to a mid-level engineer after about 10 months or so. How did I do this though? Was it intentional? Did I meticulously make a game plan and execute it to get promoted in under a year? All of that is going to be discussed in this video. And if you don't like my takes, I will find you. I asked a question on LinkedIn about how other people did it and got answers from a bunch of different creators such as Infosec Pat and Graham Helton, among others. So we'll get into that as well. Yo, if you haven't already, check out the newsletter, navigatingsecurity.net. New issue every Friday about stuff I'm bumping into as I'm studying throughout the week. Check it out if you'd like something a bit more consistent than the YouTube videos. All right, the way I'd like to get into this is pretty simple. We are going to be using a guide I've shown on the channel before, which is a hacker roadmap that will give you all the technical bits from associate level engineer all the way up to senior engineer. So at this point, we can make the assumption that you've already mastered the big four as per this guide. The big four include the following network security, web application security, binary security and or reverse engineering, mobile application security as the fourth. And for each item that involves an application such as web application security or mobile application security, you obviously need to know how to do a code review, right? The guide goes into detail about a lot of the tooling and vulnerabilities you need to know in each area mentioned. So go check that out for yourself. Now that you want to move from associate to mid-level, you need to be proficient in two more domains to make six domains total, cloud security and exploit development. All of this is most of the technical stuff you need to know, and it already seems like a lot. But now that you know which areas you're expected to be competent in, let's talk about the soft skills and all that other stuff because it matters. And because I've only been a mid-level engineer for a little while, I used what we call an appeal to authority to build my argument, which is going to be the LinkedIn question we're going to look into. And all this mid-level stuff honestly is relative. Mid-level where I work could be considered entry level somewhere else and vice versa. But at the end of the day, I've only been working as a penetration tester for less than two years. So technically, I'm still entry level, right? Sure. Anyway, I put up a message on LinkedIn asking people what got them from an entry level position to a mid level position. And I got a few responses. Let's take a look at those. All right, so this is the question I asked on LinkedIn. I said, I'm working on a video somewhat titled how to go from junior engineer to mid-level with a bit more bias towards the field. I am, of course, and that is penetration testing. But I said, I'm eager to hear from those who've successfully navigated this career progression. What was pivotal in your journey? Technical prowess, soft skills, or both? Leave a comment down below. If you are still in the junior role, look out for the video. And this is obviously the video we're doing right now, right? And I tagged a bunch of people and we got a couple of responses. This was not an actual response, but we'll start from here. This is DB, a mid-level engineer at Certus. We work together absolutely brilliant technically and soft skills as well. But this is what he said. Looks like I'm a bit late to the party here and most of the points have been covered. So I will just add this. I think one key component is understanding business better when you are at a junior level you just have to do the test you are assigned and call it a day however as you go it's more important to broaden your business mindset things like client retention and new client induction also start popping up in your mind and obviously he's talking about this because we work in consulting right hey how can i make sure this client keeps coming back to service in the future Things like that, those are the things that will get you promoted. If you will manage this, obviously notice that you're on that type of vibe. And this is just the top of my head. If I come across more points which I think are relevant, I will drop a text. He didn't drop a text. <laughs> so I guess he didn't come up with anything. And then this is Maxwell, product security. I think he's like a principal um, engineer at Greenlight. Max is pretty cool. Check him out. And 
He said a mid-level engineer knows how to dig on their own. They understand what the path looks like, but maybe they don't yet have the experience to know what troubles they'll face. For example, they might stumble upon an out-of-date version of a web server, browse around and find a few CVEs and try out some publicly available exploits. Maybe things didn't work out with the exploits, so I'd expect them to bring back results on what they worked through and why they think it didn't work. This type of curiosity and discovery is what naturally leads them to become a senior professional. So this is a pretty cool example because if you're thinking like a junior engineer, what you'd probably do is try out the exploit and just conclude that it didn't work. And why it didn't work is probably something you're going to leave out of your report or leave out of your update. But he's saying include that, give reasoning and put all the flesh around the bone so that you're not delivering something that doesn't have, you know, that juice and that context around what you tried and what you actually did. And then this is Kenneth. He's pretty big in the cybersecurity scene as well. I think he works in the blue team side of things, but his take is pretty valuable still. And he said the biggest thing I would probably say is the people who you surround yourself with. People often get comfortable once they get their first cybersecurity job. I don't know I did. And they stop actively trying to invest in themselves when it comes towards their career. It should be the exact opposite. Once you have the extra, continue to double down, right? To try and improve yourself when it comes to whatever cyber niche you want to do. As soon as you get that job, as soon as you get the promotion, double down, become the expert, right? And then this is Graham Helton, a red team specialist at Google. And he says both are important by both. He means technical skills and soft skills, right? Which was in the question. And then he says one without the other won't get you very far, but learning to prioritize each one is difficult. Absolutely. That being said, developing the I can figure it out skill of getting from point A to point B where there isn't a clear path has probably been the best thing I've learned how to do so far. So this kind of ties into what Max was saying. People that work at this capacity usually know how to stumble from point A to point B without too much guidance, right? Absolute gem. Patrick Infosig Pat, pretty cool guy. Check his channel out. I'll link it in the description maybe if I don't forget. He says, I believe that having soft skills is the key to moving up in your career. If it's penetration testing or in any area of cybersecurity, the technical skills can always be taught. Learn how to interact with people, basically, is what he's saying. Learn how to talk to clients. Learn how to, you know, manage certain things as well as yourself. So that's all for this video. I hope you actually did enjoy it. I hope you got a few tips on how to progress from your boring junior role to now a mid-level engineer role. And if you have any questions or have any other tips you think I left out, leave them in the description. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.